Uh, yeah. So this is the Norm Park podcast. It's a Christian podcast <laughs> where we get together and have a Bible study, read through the Word of God, and share our thoughts. Mm. I'm glad we back to Norm Park. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Kit, but uh, <laughs> no one part feels better. <laughs> Not Boys Gone Bible? <laughs> Look at this guy, man. This you, you make my work tough, man. Yeah, man. Because now he got to splice. Now you got to <laughs> edit everything. For what? Mm. <laughs> I'm stupid. Nah, don't say that. You do stupid <clears throat> things. <laughs> But uh, I wouldn't say this. Now nah, we 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 believe that the word of God is important. Maybe, not even maybe the most important um, book in the universe. Yep. All right. I'm sure everybody could agree. Um, the fact that we do read it um, sanctifies us, right? As the scripture says, "Let sanctify them through your word." You know, God's word is truth. So that's why we do it. And people like to follow other people online. <laughs> so our prayer is that other people oh, you know, maybe follow us and do the same thing, which is open up the Bible and just read and discuss it. Yeah. I yes. don't know, it's, it's not as fancy as those little dances, but. I'm not going to lie. I think it'd be, be dope to <clears throat> see that other than us. Like, I would love got, to follow a podcast that does they what got we do. Some, they, they got, got podcasts some that do it. But, all right. Like, <laughs> you know he was about to be like, but ours is better. <laughs> no, I was not. That's what he was about to, I you know, the filthy, he was about to get filthy. He's about to be like, but <laughs> ours is better. No, I was not going to say that. Because we all on the same team. All all right, brothers cool. out there doing it, then they doing it. Oh, he's glowing, man. But I'm just saying. Yo, filthy glue. Yo, chill, bro. Chill, Yo, bro. Chill. Yo, chill. Bro. Yeah, baby. What I'm saying is, <laughs> I know why too. I know why too. You know, you know why. Don't say that. Don't say. That. Don't, say <laughs> don't say I know why. Yeah. yeah. We know who why. We know who yeah, why. Yeah, when, you know, when you see filthy laugh, dog. Yo, chill, bro. We don't know why. We know who. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'll bug it, man. The Lord. It's the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. the Lord. Of course, of course. Of course. Of course. It's always the Lord. <laughs> You made him uncomfortable. Nah, go ahead, go ahead. Nah, nah, we playing with you. Go ahead. Nah, it's all good. No, no, but but to your point, uh, and there's, I'm actually, you know, pleased to see like a lot of different people, more more content, more godly content online, which is dope. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's definitely what's needed. More Christian content. Revival's coming, man. Yeah, we need that. That's what I believe in. I believe revival's coming. Mm. I don't believe. The book of Jonah just the the spirit always picks out books. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason the Lord picked. While I was reading Jonah, I was like, you know why? Revival's coming. Mm. Mm. I really believe that, and I really believe that's why we're going through Jonah, because revival's coming. That's That'd it. Be crazy. Straight up, it's coming. Mm. So everybody get ready. Let's get it. Especially the church. We don't mm. want to be Jonah. That's why we're going through it. None of us want to be Jonah. When yeah. we get called, don't run the other way. Mm. Mm. All right? Yeah, that's Whoever the Lord call you to go preach to, speak to, teach, it could be your family members, your coworkers, your neighbors, whoever, don't run the other way. All right? Don't be scared. The Lord is with us. So when mm. revival come, it's going to be all hands on deck. Amen. So be ready. Yeah. We ready. We ready. Hey, man. Be ready. The Lord picks we all our books be for a reason. Be. But I'm not a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. Uh, so let's quickly. We're in chapter two of, of Jonah. Yes. Um, we'll quickly go through that. Uh, and yeah, you know, we, we I think the fun part about it is that we could... <clears throat> Definitely unconventional how we do it, but we could just get together and iron sharpen iron, and we, you know, read the Bible, and then we 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 give our takes or we we give our opinions on certain things, and you know sometimes we could get into this argument and back and forth, and we go into this deep rabbit hole, and um, 
you know, our intention is always to edify because um, we're conscious of the mics and the cameras. And, you know, if the camera and mic's off, we could talk crap all day because we understand we each other. Do. But yeah. other people that might be watching, they, you know, they're not familiar with maybe, you know, the, the dialect and the, the body language and the format the dynamics. and how we, the dynamics of, of our relationship. But we, we never want to try to lead somebody off the context. Mm-hmm. So instead, be a Berean. Go read it yourself. Uh, Go study it yourself. Definitely encourage that. You know, sometimes we might try to uh, win a point instead of uh, you know highlighting what the word says. So forgive us for that when we when we do that. But that's just who we are. I think that's the. Um, I mean, I think that's, that's the personality of the show. That's, that's you the know show. what I mean? Yeah, like, that's it's because it's happening in real time. Like, uh, we don't. Prep. We we prep individually. This ain't WWE. But it's not like we get together and be like, "Yo, Mike, you gonna make this point, and Andrew you gonna make this point." Now, not like this. The stuff that I'm hearing from you and you, yeah, I'm hearing it during this podcast. And sometimes I'm like, "Oh, I didn't see that." Or sometimes I'll be like, "Nah, I didn't agree with that." And right. you know, we we go to back and forth. But that's what it is. It's cool. I rather you know go back and forth about the Bible than. You know, scary hours three or something. <laughs> what you said, scary who? It's an album. Like, oh. <laughs> you know the popular things and, right. and, and the, the culture that everybody else talk about. No, nah, definitely. I mean, whatever you could do that too. Mm-hmm. But we choose to do this, and again, I, I think I'm just highlighting. It was probably on my mind certain aspect of of the podcast that people might not get. Cause, I, 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 go ahead. What you gonna say? No, I was gonna say like um, uh, I'm on board. With what you're saying is that um, we all we we all do agree on one common theme. We may disagree on many other things, you know. Um, but when it comes to like the acronym, I like to use is doctrine. We all agree on doctrine, you know, which is the number one D, um, the deity of Christ. O for original sin. C the canon. T for Trinity. R for resurrection, I for the incarnation, and for the new birth, E for eschatology, the return of Christ. So it's like we all agree. We, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, salvation, the gospel, we all agree. But, you know, the other things that we come in, we may disagree because, you know, Christianity is not monolithic. Mm. You know, you may have we may have different opinions, different things. And, and I think the scriptures were written in that fashion so that we could have discussions. Yeah. And that we could debate this so that we could, you know, sharpen each other. And that's the problem. Like, them, you know, Ms. that's where, you know, that's how you end up getting cults out there where everybody agree on one thing, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody got to follow this one person that started this one movement. You know, in Christianity, we're not monolithic. We may disagree on things. You know, that's why you have, you know, arguments from ever since, you know, with Calvinism, Arminianism. You know, you got all these things. They're our brothers in Christ. You have a Presbyterian, you have this, you know, but on the core doctrine, they agree. The essentials. Mm. The essentials agree. The non-essentials, there's liberty, you know? And it's, these are the non-essentials that we do. You see, we go back and forth and we banter. You disagree. We fight and all that. Yeah. But, you know, other than that, we agree on the essentials. Mm-hmm. And we, we do it in love, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I love these dudes right here, man. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for the, the teachings because, you know, I, I grew up sort of under them, you know, in a way. They were saved before me, so I'm grateful for my big brothers in Christ, you know. But you see what we do. We love each other, man. No, amen. Amen. So in chapter one, um, you know, it opens up with, you know, a message from God to Jonah. And, you know, obviously, like you said, he went the other way, right? And, and rebellion and disobedience. And we, we're seeing how far rebellion and disobedience could take you, right? And the direction it'll take you, it'll take you down. Um, and there's consequences. Um, especially, you know, I, I put him in a special category because he had a job. He had a position. He had a ministry um, that wasn't common, right? He was a prophet, right? His job was to, you know, uh, speak the word of God to others, and on a particular, um, 
like uh, for this particular message or for this particular outreach that the Lord had for him, he didn't want to do it. And that was to go preach to the, uh, the Assyrians mm -hmm. in the great city of Nineveh. He was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> he did not want to do it. So, you know, he left, went to the boat, went down to the boat, down to the lower deck, and he went to sleep. And, you know, due to his rebellion, um, you know, the Lord is going to have his way. And unfortunately, they, there was other people around that got af uh, affected by it. Um, you know, the Lord sent a great wind to cause, uh, you know, rough seas for the boat. And you had these, these pagan non-believers didn't know what was going on and then now they're part of the drama like they're being you know it's affecting them right yeah so what else what else we spoke about yesterday or last week <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna edit that too oh man um yeah that just um like you said, he was going down. He just kept going down, 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 because he was trying to flee from the presence of the Lord. You know, that was that was the main thing that pointed out. You know, that stuck out to me. That was his. That was the reason why he yeah. went to um, Tarshish is to go from the presence of the Lord. The word of the God came to him, and he he didn't want to hear it. He didn't agree with it, right. and he wanted to get away from God's presence. So he thought he could physically, you know. Let me remove myself. Let me go to the other, the furthest, the other furthest point to where I, I'm supposed to be. And we're just seeing God, you know, showing him, you can't flee from my presence. You know, he threw a storm at him. And, you know, um, the Gentiles on the boat, they understood this was, this was God. This was something supernatural. And he was even aware of it. So it's just, you know, trying to flee from the presence of God and realizing no matter where he went, the presence of God was everywhere. So, so finally, I guess the last, it, it got to the point where something had to be done, right? And, you know, he was like, all right, well, you guys have to throw me off the boat mm -hmm. in order for this to stop. You know, I'm of the position that, you know, in his mind, he would rather die than repent right there. He would rather die than see the, the Assyrians delivered. And he wouldn't repent. Like he was still in his stubborn and his rebellious rebellion, even at that point. Um, and you know, he he kind of shifted the activity of ending this to the other guys instead of the man of God being that spiritual leader. And we also read how they were praying and they were trying to figure things out trying to get an answer uh, using the spiritual route, even though they were pagans and they were worshiping gods that couldn't help them. But they were actually going that route, whereas the man that knew God, knew the true and living God, he wasn't really doing anything. and He wasn't saying anything. and He wasn't willing to relent at that point. So to me, you know, I think he took the position of, I'd rather die than have to repent. Because if he repents, he knows he's going to have to go and do what the Lord said, which would um, result in people that he hated getting delivered. That's the position I hold, and I think that's where we kind of had an agreement uh, last week. An agreement or disagreement? I mean, disagreement last week. Yeah. <laughs> and ultimately, you know, at first they tried to resist to do whatever they can not to do that because obviously it was something bad. But it got to the point where they did do that, and they tossed them off the boat. And then it stopped. And just that experience alone um, brought them to the point where they got saved because they believed this God. And we read that. Did they sacrifice? They made vows, right? They yeah. The they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. So even in that situation, the Lord... Uh, use that in order to save souls. Despite of the man of God, despite the prophet, the Lord used that situation to save souls. It's 
So, uh, can we, anybody, any thoughts? Anything to add, takeaways? I mean, that's pretty much the covered for the first chapter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we see, in, you know, it ended with the fish swallowing him up. Yeah. And him being in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And the Lord prepared a large sea creature, which is wild. Right? So that's, yeah, that's kind of where we left off. Mm-hmm. All right. So chapter two, short chapter. Did did we read that? The verse 17? I don't think we read that. Yeah, that we one. read that. Yeah, you want to go through it again? I think, yeah, we sh- I mean, we should like include that with, you know, the first couple of verses. Yeah. Of yeah. Chapter we'll two, because we didn't. Cool beans. What do you want me to read to? Actually, just read 17. Let's, we could probably discuss that a little. Okay. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I mean, one of the things that, you know, people read and they say, oh, this book is fantasy, or how could this happen? And it, it becomes a, a, a point of uh, contention. Yeah, a point of contention where people try to invalidate the book for what it is. I think this book is historical, it's uh, literary and genre. Um, although we don't know the author, I believe the author is Jonah. Um, but yeah. yeah. So, um, and throughout modern history, there has been instances where people got swallowed by whales, mm-hmm. sperm whales, and survived. Right. Maybe not for three days. They weren't there for three days, but uh, it showed um, scientifically that a person could survive within the stomach of a large sea creature. Whether this sea creature that the Lord prepared was a you know, it was a whale, a, a whale shark. Like, we don't know. It could have been some ancient dinosaur creature. We don't know. All we know is that it was a, a big sea water creature fish mm-hmm. thingamajig. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it says here the Lord prepared it specifically for this. So there literally there could have been a lot more room in this animal's, you know, GI system, right? Like yeah. they're comparing this to what we know of today, which is wrong, right? This is why a lot of people say it, it couldn't have happened. But it doesn't matter because it says the Lord specifically prepared this fish. Like this fish had one job. Swallow Jonah, <laughs> right? Let him chill in your stomach for a few days and then spit him out. Mm-hmm. So this could have been a custom fish that there was w- only one ever made. Mm. Right, so I just think, you know, I just think that when you read it, read what the word says. Like the Lord specifically created this fish for that purpose. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, some of the historical thing, like you mentioned, the modern one was um, James Bartley. That was also that was history of a guy that was, you know, um, that was swallowed, Mm -hmm. and I think he was in the it was a it was a sperm whale. And then they were looking for, he got lost at sea. And then eventually when they caught the sperm or that, it was a crew of them that was chasing right, him. Right. They they dissected the sperm and they found him. And I think he was in there for like 18 hours or something like that. And he ended up in the ICU for like three weeks and recovered. And they say when they recovered, he was like totally white, yeah. pale from the gastric acid from the, mm-hmm. you know, the whale. Another one was, um, was Luigi Marquez. He was a 56-year-old fisherman that happened in April 2016. And you remember there was one very recently, um, Michael Packard, who was a lobster fisherman off of Cape Cod. Mm. He fell into the water. Yeah, and that, yeah, that was in 2023. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah, yeah. Michael Ma- Michael Packard was his name. And um, same thing, got swallowed by a well. Mm. But that one, he got swallowed. And I think it was like within a few hours, he got spit back up. Right, right. And there was another one where um, I forgot the name of this this one person, but um, he lost his dog. The dog fell off in the water, and then uh, a couple of days later, there was a whale, and the the dog was lodged in the nostril of the whale and uh, shot it out. I was still alive. <laughs> still alive. Wow. So, so the thing is that these things happened. You could survive, basically, and you could, you and could, you survive. could survive. And right. I think God specifically allowed yeah. these modern things to happen to show us that. Listen, <laughs> right. and and something a little bit more, like more, um, 
like technical, if you think about it, is that man created like uh, submarines that carries tons of people, travel underwater for for hours, for days on end. So if man can make a submarine and have people survive in it, you're going to tell me God can't have a whale for a specific purpose? And that's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the thing. And you missed the whole point. Right. Right, because they, you know, you bring up Jonah to somebody, they think it's about a whale or it's about a big fish. That's not the, that's just not the point. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I like when God allow these things to happen in modern times, allow it to be witnessed and recorded, and it's a witness to his word to show you, like, all right, it's possible, scientifically, it's possible that a person can survive, you know, being swallowed by a large creature, mm-hmm. sea creature. And what's yeah. crazy is that the, they'll believe that we were created from nothing, <laughs> From a big bang, <laughs> right? But something because God says this, oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they'll go and they'll believe something ridiculous about how we were formed. You know, you know and and you know, part of that I think is that is Satan. If you see one of the three, I think the three major books that Satan attacks the most: Genesis, Jonah, and Daniel. I think those are the three common books that's always attacked by people like even like liberal christians will attack daniel because they'll say oh we don't think daniel actually wrote it because the prophecies were so specific this is someone who must have wrote it after um these empires came into being all right genesis is extremely attacked you know um and i think the reason is like genesis is attacked by saying because this is where we get the incarnation of jesus this is where we learn about jesus with genesis chapter three about the coming of the messiah in the beginnings. In the beginning. Yeah. Beginnings of you know what I'm saying? a lot of things. I think Jonah's attacked because Jesus alluded to it about this resurrection thing. Like, that's the sign I'm going to give you. Right. And he specifically says, Jonah. Right. So now Satan's going to attack it. Daniel is extremely attacked because Daniel in 925 specifically talks about his second coming. Yeah. So the books that are mostly attacked are the books dealing with... With Christ, centered on Christ, on you know his first coming and his second coming. Mm-hmm. So that's how I kind of like see it, why these books are attacked so vehemently. Mm. All right, so let's let's get into chapter two. Okay. I mean, just read through it, right? Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, "I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and He answered me." Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you, into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Mm -hmm. Mm. So Jonah's prayer, uh, you know, when I read this, I was like, oh, man, it's like a psalm, right? Very Mm -hmm. poetic, very psalm-like. So what's, what's, what's happening over here? I mean, he's in the belly of the fish, and to me, I think now he realized, like, one, he can't flee from the presence of God, mm-hmm. and I felt like um, when they threw him overboard, I think he was at a point where he felt like that was the judgment of God, like, for being disobedient to God, um, he knew he had a job, he was disobedient, he felt like the storm was, you know, God's punishment. And, you know, him 
getting thrown off the boat. I think he considered himself dead, you know, and this is why I felt like the fishermen, um, the sailors at the time, they were like, you know, don't charge this innocent blood on us because we know once we throw this guy over, he's dead. But, you know, him being in the fish, I think he realized like, nah, this is the, this is God's grace. Like I should be dead because when I got thrown over that boat in the middle of the sea, it, during a storm, there's no way I should have survived. So I think this is where that prayer comes from, where he realized, like, you know, God had preserved my life. Now, he's praying inside of the fish, but all of these things that he's describing, is that while he was in the water? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, Before so, the fish swallowed him yeah. up. So the question that I asked, too, is they throw him overboard, and immediately the sea's calmed. Yeah. Right? So is he in calm waters at this point? I mean, I, I don't know, but the prayer, he's... Re so I feel like... So you said something yesterday about... I keep saying yesterday. <laughs> about, um, it seems so close. It seems so like... You said, say it again so you can edit it. The, uh, <laughs> the, fish was, the fish was grace. Right. I feel like that was the grace of And God. after reading that, you were right. Because mm -hmm. the Lord sent the fish to save him. Because he was drowning, right. and this prayer kind of, you know, certain parts describes the experience of seaweeds and him falling, and he's reaching that point, going lower and lower and lower. Mm -hmm. I think it even describes, like, right? Okay. Seaweeds wrapped around my head, right. yeah. and the, he sank. And your billows and your waves passed over me. Right, so now he's, so I kind of feel like he's, uh, recounting the prayer inside the fish that he he was probably going through that in his head. He realized in his head like, uh-oh, this is it. I have no more recourse. There's nothing else I could do. And what happens when everybody's in trouble and they have no more options? They cry out. They cry out to God. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he cried out to God while he was going through that process. While he was drowning. While he was struggling. Mm -hmm. While he was getting caught up in the weeds. And he was going down, down, down. And he was like, oh man, I'm going to die. Yep. And when that realization hit him, that's when he cried out to God. And you know, asked for deliverance. And he asked for thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And he, he remembered the omnipresence of God. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah, no, I agree. And the question that I ask now, because when you read the end of verse 17 in, in chapter one, where it says he was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Yeah. Some commentators say that at the end of the three days is when he st he started to pray. No, I don't. Right? Yeah, I don't they say. Yeah, the word yeah. Don't say so that. what I'm saying is what it, it sounds like here. He was rescued by was being re swallowed yeah. by the fish. And then he was he immediately started to thank the Lord for that. Yeah. Right. Like he wasn't mm -hmm. pridefully sitting in the belly of the fish for three days no. mm -hmm. before, okay, Lord, now I'm going to pray. Because the Lord, right? Verse 10, it says, the Lord spoke to the sea creature and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. No, so this is after. But the Lord, even in, in chapter one, now I get the impression like the Lord prepared the sea creature to go rescue him mm -hmm. from the bottom of the sea. You're right. Because he was going to drown. Because he was not, like, he, he was done. He was dead. Yeah. There's nothing else he could do. He reached the end of himself at that point. And the Lord sent the sea creatures to, the sea creature to, to um, rescue him. And he said this prayer of what he was going through drowning in that process. Because, you know, you read it, it, it talks about it. Yeah. And he's saying, man, I'm not even going to be able to gaze at your temple. Um, like like, I'm not going to be able to worship you anymore. Like, the phrases that he's using is very Jewish in nature. Right. So, obviously, this book, the audience for this book is is the Jews. Right. You know, so he, he's kind of recounting, man. And it, it was probably 25 seconds. It was probably, you know, 40 seconds of him going through that experience of drawing. I don't know if y'all remember my Johnny story. Oh. Yo, that's why I was going to ask you to bring. <laughs> While I was reading this, I was like, yo, we're going to have to go back to the truth. What was that, season one? That was the season one drowning story? I said, yo, me, this guy going to have to give us the drowning story one more it's time. It's a drowning story. 
I think you may have to recount that. If nah. we have any new, it'll be as traumatizing for the okay. guy. But but you know, it was something that's quick, but it feels like it's taking forever. Right. So yeah, and I think that prayer is just, you know, the Lord is his and his power and his omnipresence. He realized it, and he actually, in that struggle, in that journey, he cried out to the Lord, mm -hmm. and the Lord sent the fish. Yeah, he said, "I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and He answered me." And he answered, yeah. You know, so like you said, he's recounting that moment that of, yeah. Right. Like, and like you said, Ange, the sea could have been calm, but he was going he down. Going down. Because the Lord is dealing with him. You know what I'm saying? The sea, the storm calmed down for the sailors. Not for you. Not for you. Mm. And it's like something like what Ralph said, like that storm that was inside. Right. He's, he understand this is between him and God. And that's why I think even to the point where he was like, yo, throw me over. Cause he's like, yo, God is run, is coming after me, you know and, what I mean? And now you guys are being affected, and it's but this thing is between him and God because God gave him the word. It wasn't about nobody. And else. I still think that there was some repentance while he was on the ship. I don't, I don't know if right? it was repentance. I think uh, this is the point the of reason, repentance. The reason why I say that is because remember oh, when you were saying how he gave the responsibility to the dudes to throw them over, but here he said he he admits that it was the Lord right. who mm. threw him over, right. He says in verse 3, for you cast me into the deep, right? So he mm, knew the entire yeah. time that it was the Lord's will right. for him to be thrown over. So even at that point, he's walking in God's will by telling these the sailors, this is this is mm -hmm. what has to be done to make things right. So I... I go ahead. No, I was going to... The the thing... No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm all... Oh. I, was, I was reading that too. And I was like, you know, I, I totally agree with it. But I, in, in the format of how he's saying it, like the psalmist, the way he's kind of po poetic nature and some of the things he said, you know, which is kind of kind of weird. Well, not weird, but it, it's revealing. Um, to me, I think he was in a position like the Lord put him in a position like that was the only thing you, you got to do. Mm. So it's, it's weird kind of like he's saying you did it, but... Let me... So this is a question because... After last, like, you know, I was thinking about it, and when you was like, he should have prayed. You understand what I'm saying? Do you think that he prayed and the Lord didn't hear him? Like, when oh, yeah. the sailors, when the sailors was like, yo, sleeper, get up and pray. Nah, do you think that there was, a, do you think that he tried to pray and the Lord was just, you know him? You don't I, think that? I think that? he mm. was trying to, I think he was trying to get away from the Lord, like you said. No, I agree with that. So, yeah. right. when, when he's trying to escape from the Lord, escape from the Lord's presence, all of that is right. Is is dead, right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because he mm. he made that decision. Right. So I don't think he prayed. I think, like I said, I think they asked him. He was honest about everything. They drew straws, so they already know you're the culprit, right? They interrogated him like he was in a court, and he fessed up and he was like, "Yeah," but I still, he was still dead set on his ways. He no, was, but I will. still think there was something going on, no, bro, not. because of the fact. Okay, where no. they ask him, "Who are you?" and he he says, I, "I, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land." Yeah. Like at that point, he's expressing who his God is. No, yeah, and this isn't. You know what I mean? So I feel like mm -hmm. there's something turning in him at that point, in the middle of this this crazy storm, mm -hmm. where his life is at stake now, and the fact that he told these people, "Listen, to you have to throw me overboard. That's the only way to make this right." I feel like there's something going on inside of him at this point. Now, with the thing I I I read it again. I don't think it was repentance, but I think it was a confession. Yeah. Right? So, when I read when I read it again, I I looked at it as salvation, right? Like when men are saved, right? Before we repent, we have to confess. Like the confession comes first. You have to confess to the point of you're a sinner. And I think this is like, you know, this is kind of showing us that progression of getting to the point of repentance, right? So when um, the truth is presented to you, you confess that this is the truth. And I think we're seeing the progression with Jonah. Like, first the men was like, you know, it's because of you we're here. And he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's because of my sin that, you know, this storm is happening. And I think he confessed. You understand? And I think him, you know, saying I got to get thrown overboard. He understanding that it's because of his sin that, you know, we're in this situation. And I think he, 
I think him saying, get in, you know, throw me over into the sea, I think he realized that probably this is my judgment for being disobedient. You know what I mean? I've been disobedient to the Lord. I'm rebellious to the Lord. The Lord gave me a job. I didn't do it. And now this storm is my chastisement. This storm is my punishment. And I think that's where he was at. Like, he was just like, you know what? I messed up. At this point, I deserve death. I deserve to get thrown off this ship. I deserve whatever judgment that the Lord has given me right now from the storm. And then you seeing with the, the Gentiles, like they were trying to roll and it didn't appease the storm. So I think he got to that point where he was like, you know what? I deserve death. And yeah. I think, you know, him saying, throw me overboard was him just, you know what? I rebelled against God. This is what I deserve. So I don't, going back to what you're saying, I don't think it was, I think repentance came in the prayer, like mm -hmm. after, like when he got into the belly of the well, yeah. and he realized that God saved him from even trying to kill himself, like, like understanding, like yo, you know what? This is my judgment. I gotta get thrown off this ship to to to, to calm the storm. I'm dead. This is my life. And I think when he woke up in the belly, you know, three three days in the belly of the bell, he probably whatever came into conscious. He was like, wow, the Lord heard my prayer because while he was drowning, I think he was like, this is my judgment. I'm gonna die. There's no hope for me. But he cried out to God. And going back to what you were saying, that's what God always wanted for him, just to cry out. And I think he got to that point when he was drowning. And also one thing that I, I'm, I'm, you know, I want to point out, the main reason why he, was, he went to Tarshish is to flee from the presence of God. And getting thrown over that ship, like when we read the prayer, it says, you know, he felt like he was in Sheol. Mm -hmm. He felt like he was in hell. And it's kind of like, I feel like the Lord was like, you want to get away from my presence? Here's a taste of being away from my presence. Mm -hmm. being, being out of the presence of God is hell. Mm. That's it. Like, everybody who is in hell or who's going to hell is because you didn't want the presence of God. That is hell. Yeah. And I think his right. whole focus was getting out the presence of God. And it's crazy how, you know, he, he says it. He says, um... Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. It's like he finally got what he, you know, what you wanted. Oh, this is what, what you, you wanted? Thought, what you thought you wanted. Right, what you right, thought you wanted. You you like wanted, you was yeah. like, oh, I want to be from the presence of God. You ran, you got into the boat, you went to Tarshish, you did all of that. You even thought, you even got, you know, threw yourself over, off the boat. And God is like, well, I'm going to let you get a taste of not being in my presence. And it's like hell. And I think it's when he got to the end of himself to that point is when he cried out. He's like, no, I don't want this. And you cried out to God, and then God, you know, uh, uh, saved them. But I think the whole yeah. point was to leave the presence of God, and I think mm -hmm. that's what he got a taste of when he got yeah. thrown off that boat. But and I, and I, I listen. I I agree, and it doesn't say anything obvious. But I'm I'm not saying there was complete repentance on the boat. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying, there's a process. I, that's and, what right? I agree. Mm -hmm. And he, when when the Lord told him go to Nineveh, and he got up and went the other way, there was no fear in the Lord. Or of the Lord at that moment, you know what I mean. Like, but in the middle of that storm on the boat, where they were asking him, "Who, you know, who's your God?" He was like, "I fear the Lord," and I feel like at that moment he was confessing. Yes, right. I He's like, that. "I right. fear the Lord." So there was something happening in his heart at that moment, right? You know that needed to, you know, him, you know, to him to be thrown overboard to complete the process. Right. But I do think that there was something happening. I don't think he was being thrown overboard. A prideful, you know, arrogant person at that point. I feel like that something had switched, and he was like, like Mike was saying, now this is my judgment. Now I'm gonna die. Yeah, but I do think something was happening on that boat. Yeah. The only one caveat, though, like I agree with a lot of things you're saying. The the only one little nuance to when you said, um, "I feel the Lord," like that is kind of like a creedal statement that most Jews like. It's like you know, mm. I'm a I'm a Hebrew. I'm of the child of Abraham. I feel the Lord the one true living God of the land and sea. Okay. It's like, you know, kind of like part of you when people just repeat creeds. Okay. But you know what I'm why, saying? But why does that matter at that point? No, I'm just saying that it could have been that he was just like, this is why I am. I'm the Hebrew. We fear the Lord. Not right, as right, him right. actually, actually saying, saying that it, right. I feel the Lord like he's right. actually right. confessing or repenting. At, you, I mean, you know? But that, so you don't, do we know that? You, well, the things that, I mean, in terms of, like, the, the creedal statements, like, we see it throughout, like, you know, these guys always say, when they say, who are you? Yeah, I'm the Hebrew. 
in you know in that you know situation. what I'm saying. With that, no, we don't know. Like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just saying that yeah, it no. could possibly be. I don't know. Yeah. You know, and there's there's one more thing too. You know, again, like I said, his whole thing was to flee the presence of God. When you read four, it says, "Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight." Like, okay, now he realized, you know, this is what I wanted. God has given it to me. He says, "Yet I will look again toward your holy temple." And I think, like you, you just said something that hit. Um, you know, him being a Jew, the pre- the temple was where the presence of God lied. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? And it's not until you just said it, it hit. Like he was like, "I'm gonna look at, towards your temple because I re- I want your presence." I did, like you said, I this is this is what I thought I wanted, and when I got it, I realized I don't want it. And I think him saying, "I'm looking towards." Your temple is him saying, yo, I really, is him telling God, I do want your presence. You know, because again, the main thing of him running away is to, he was trying to flee the presence of God. And what's crazy is the word of the Lord came to him. And, you know, you mentioned something last week where you was like, um, you know, God didn't tell him to throw himself off the ship. But it's like, the way I'm looking at it is like how the Lord is speaking through him is through the works now. Now I'm going to speak to you through this storm. I'm going to speak to you, you know, you're going to get thrown off the ship. You're going to drown the well. All of these were like, God was like, oh, you want to flee from my presence? All right. I gave you a word. Oh, you think you could run away from my, matter of fact, here's a storm. Here's the casting of the lots. Here's getting thrown off the ship. Here's drowning. Here's, the, I, like it says, I prepared all of that. Mm-hmm. I prepared the fish. <laughs> I threw the storm. It's like God is like, oh, you don't want to go against my word. Oh, you don't think I can work in the actions? All right, I control everything. My presence yeah. is everywhere. I'm in told. I'm totally sovereign over everything. And I think God was showing him his power. Like, oh, you think you want to run away from me? All right, I'm gonna show how I'm everywhere and I right. control everything. And you know what's crazy about that too? Where he yeah. says, "I've been cast out of your sight." You know how many people wake up in hell, right? And they and th- their entire wow. life, they didn't want to have anything to do with God, right? Right, and then they they wake oh. up in hell. They get to this point where they're like, "Now I know what it's like to been have cast out of your sight, God." But they don't have another opportunity mm-hmm. to look towards the temple. Right. Like it's a wrap for you. Like you're, from now on, you're going to spend eternity not in the presence of God. Yeah. You know, and that and that and that to me is the saddest thing that can yeah. ever happen to anyone. I got one question real quick. Do you think the do you think the you think the 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 sailor's prayer had something to do with God preparing that fish? The sailor's prayer. Because it says like when you read it it says and do not charge us with innocent blood. Do you think it's mm. like cuz it's like cuz we're going to see throughout the theme like you said the person who's supposed to be the man of God is running away from God. And it's the people who didn't have God, the pagans, they're the ones who's genuinely interacting with God. When they see God, they respond. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, when I read it again, it's kind of like, you know, these guys, this prayer was genuine. They were like, you know, they said, therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, we pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. Like, don't let us die. And it says, and do not charge us with innocent blood for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So, like, what we're about to do, we understand this is your will. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he told us this is what we have to do. But I think it's like, we know when we throw this guy over, <laughs> he's dead. Like, they, everybody knew that, even Jonah. Like, everybody's like, yo, dog, you're going to die. And it's like, they prayed this prayer so sincere, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, why wouldn't the Lord honor it and be uh, like, you know yes, what? I don't see that. Why not? It was an honest, it was well, a sincere well, prayer. I mean, you're saying right. that if they wouldn't have prayed that, then the Lord wouldn't have prayed. No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that that prayer, again, we understand the power of prayer. It's just like with, with Lot, right? The Lord went to, the, to Sodom and Gomorrah. He saved Lot. But it tells you, you know, the Lord saved them because he remembered Abraham mm-hmm. prayer. So it's just showing you like, you know, and, and the crazy thing about it is this happened before it tells you that the Lord prepared the fish. It was after these guys' prayer. Right. So it's like, why wouldn't the Lord had honored the prayer of these men uh, who I mean, turned to him and they were sincere? So you're saying that within the time that they prayed and the time that they threw him overboard, God listened and made a fish. Yeah. Why not? 
But because one in verse three, it says, you cast me into the deep, meaning that this was the Lord's will the entire time. Right. And this was, to me, it was the process of, of him getting to that repentance had nothing to do with other people's, you know, actions. Okay, it had like, nothing to do with those men's prayer? You don't think so? I, I mean... You don't think I, I that don't think people that are the, saved because of the prayers of others? No, that had nothing... That wasn't about salvation, right? No, I'm talking about salvation. I'm talking about just his life being saved because it says... It says, do not charge us with innocent blood. And they knew what they were doing. They were going to kill him. Yeah. I mean, we know that part. And he got saved. They, he, he didn't die. But I don't think that, that their prayers was why the Lord created a fish okay. when the entire time his, his job was to go to Nineveh. All right. No problem. So, you're, so you're, what, you're, what makes, mm. you're making it sound as if they didn't pray, then the Lord wouldn't have created that fish and he would have died and he would have never went to Nineveh. And I don't see that. As, no, I, I don't. I didn't say that. I'm just but saying that's what that, that, that's what you're saying. No, I'm just saying like like you. We had people that prayed for us. Did yeah. Say like you said, like your mother. Hundred percent. Mm. Do she you prayed. think? Do you think your mother's prayers were involved in your salvation? A hundred percent. Why? Do you think that Wait. the Lord could have? If your mother never prayed, do you think the Lord would have still saved you? Um, I mean, like 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 we talked about last night. There are things that have to happen in someone's life. I think for your heart to be prepared. So by praying for someone, mm-hmm. you know, I do think the Lord honors those prayers mm-hmm. and causes your heart to be softened more, mm-hmm. right? But, mm-hmm. you know, if the Lord knew from the eternity that at some point my heart was going to be softened, maybe I would have maybe I would have been saved when I was 60 instead of being saved when I was 35. Right. You know what I mean? But I those prayers from 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 these these mm-hmm. sailors, like I feel like one God saved those sailors despite you know, um Jonah's actions, I and I think that, that God either. saved Jonah despite the the, 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 the sailors. sailors' actions because that was God's will all along was to save Jonah. So, do I think the Lord heard those prayers? Of course, but do I think that those prayers was were specific uh, into Him making the fish? I I don't think so. I think okay. that was no problem. All right, yeah. so let me ask you guys yeah. a question, just real quick. And I know we all read Jonah already. Like, what do you think Jonah's about? Like, the story. Revival. I think that's one point. Revival. Yeah. God's grace. I, I feel like the main the main thing that I got from reading the whole book of Jonah is just the grace of God. You had a guy who was rebellious, who didn't want to do the will of God, and God, you know, was patient with him mm-hmm. through the whole process. And, like, we're seeing even... While God is dealing with this rebellious um, prophet, he's saving people along. So, you know, throughout the whole book, I'm just seeing, you know, really the grace of God, how patient God is and and how, you know, he uses his sovereignty to mm-hmm. to save men. I think know? Jonah is obviously a mover and a shaker, right? Oh, word, like, you use like that your, word? Like your man. <laughs> 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 Not just messing with you, but... I think the whole entire book it, it encompasses God's will, despite our disobedience to Him. Like the, His salvation plan is going to happen, regardless, and people are going to be saved regardless of of our disobedience mm-hmm. to Him. And like like Mike always says, I always see the grace and everything. So the grace that He sees, I see that as well. You know, and to me, even if 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 it was chastisement. I think that even being chastised is God's grace right? because it gets you to, to be where God wants you. Mm-hmm. So even God's chastisement to his sons and daughters is grace. Is love, right. That's it's what love. it says, right. That's you know, what it so, says, right. Yeah, so I, I, that's how I see the, the book. Yeah, I mean, I see the same thing. You know, we're seeing the, the patience, the grace, and the mercy of our perfect, holy, eternal God in direct contradistinction to a uh, selfish, hard-hearted man, Jonah, mm-hmm. you know, and despite, you know, his rebellious, you know, how God is always sovereign and he's always gracious and he's always loving and he's always merciful and that, you know, and that this whole book points to Jesus Christ Yeah, that's and another the gospel. Thing. Yeah, that's another thing that I'm, I'm seeing more and more as I read it more throughout. I'm s- clearly seeing how the gospel is from the beginning of this book to the end of this book. So many points. And 
you know, we'll, I'll bring it out as so, we go on. Two things, I guess, similar to what everybody said, God's uh, universal love, right? And he's, he's, he's trying to show that, which is, you know, we read that back in Genesis 12, um, 12, 3. Where it says, I'll bless those that bless you, talking to Abraham, but I'll curse the one who curses you. And through you, all the people of the earth will be blessed. So we're seeing that work out right here. The all the people of the earth will be blessed. Right? The Lord chose one nation to be, like, evangelize the earth and save mm -hmm. other people. So we're seeing that happen. That was God's will from the beginning. And somebody said it last week, like, the Lord don't change, right? But now we're just seeing, oh, you, yeah, you said this back to right. Abraham back then. And there's also another problem that the Lord is highlighting to the nation of Israel is this national pride that they have. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like Jonah. So it's kind of like, I don't see Jonah as an evil dude. Right. But when it came to that particular situation because we read back in second kings where the lord used them and enlarged the land under an evil king but when he came to that jonah was like nah yeah that's not happening lord not your will my will right and he was like he was totally opposed to that mm -hmm. and that was the problem right, right. and he represented a problem that was happening with everybody because yeah. this book's audience is the Jewish Jew. people. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, to add another layer to the complication um, is that, I'm like, in terms of, like, with the national pride, is that could you imagine what Jonah was thinking? Because as we, as we know that his contemporaries were Amos and Hosea, and Amos and Hosea were prophesying, when you read their books, they were prophesying on the coming destruction of Assyria for them taking Israel captive and destroying the nation of Israel. So they're going into that. This is what's going to happen because uh, Assyria is going to take the Northern kingdom into captivity under Sennacherib and Sargon the second and, you know, and Shalmaneser and all these different Kings that, um, that the Assyrians went through. So I'm wondering that he, chances are he's probably privy privy to their prophecy that yo this is going to happen these guys are going to destroy the nation and spread them out and now you want me to go save them <laughs> so you see could you imagine what's going through his head when he know what his boys are kicking mm. what cuz cuz his boys are kicking to the nation to to the Jews like this is a prophecy if you you know if you don't change this is what Assyria is going to do to you and then God is telling you, Jonah, you go tell the Syrians you need to repent. Mm. He's like, wait, hold on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you're seeing all these layers that's happening mm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, you, totally. And when again, we get to chapter four, it's gonna, like you said, it, it, it is. It, he's gonna reveal yeah. it all. <laughs> so, so I don't see Jonah as a like a he was an evil dude. I just saw that he had this. Yes this character flaw in him, you know, racism. Right. Yes. You yes. Know, political pride. Yes. That yes. the Lord had to deal with and reveal. But, but ultimately isn't that in itself evil? The desire no, yes, for that, that's, a million people to perish? No, that I no, agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. He was but, all for that. But it's kinda like and the reason I'm saying like he there was something in him that the Lord had to had to deal with. Yes. Right? And that thing, his will was, he was not willing to break. You know what I'm saying? And we're seeing the Lord deal with it. And, you know, from the opening of the first chapter, the Lord said, yo, this is what you're going to do. And I'm going to make sure you do it. But the overall story, obviously, is God's universal love. Because he said that back in Genesis 12. He's like, yo, everybody's going to get blessed. Yeah. Mm. My love is not exclusive mm. to just Israel. Salvation is not exclusive to just Israel. But Jonah's like, no. It should only be exclusive to us. God, you got it wrong this time. I ain't doing it. I'm out. So mm -hmm. that's the problem. Yeah. So, so that's why 
when um even with the prayer, right? He's talking about, oh man, thank you for delivering me. Remembering your 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 um yeah. omnipresence. Yeah. Dog, he didn't say nothing about what he was commissioned to do. He didn't say, My bad, you're right. Those people deserve he didn't mention any of that stuff. He didn't mention it on the boat. He didn't mention it in the prayer inside inside the he was just grateful that he got saved, that the Lord saved him, and he's starting to remember who the God is and his qualities and how good he is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um I agree. Damn, I was about to say a point. <laughs> it was based on what you said. So it's kind of like I compartmentalize this. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. What Jonah's doing. It's yeah. just this one thing that he's like, yo, dog, I'm not breaking. Everything else, he was probably great. Like, I think he knew the Lord. I think he feared. Yeah. I think he okay. feared the Lord. Mm-hmm. Genuinely feared the Lord. Right, right. I think he knew the God's word. No. Oh, I agree. Know? He knew all of that. But this? Yes. It's a problem. That for was me. a problem. Yep. Now yep. you see the Lord is exposing it. And do you think that we all have that? We time. all have that Ten with those times. issues. We're living in a society where that's so prep. That's the language now. And that that's exactly yep. what I think. That's why I think it's coming out. Like even now with us. Like, Dog. like that prejudice, it's, that pride, yeah. that national yep. pride. You understand what I'm saying? Yo, the religious pride, all mm-hmm. of that. Because like he said, he mentions his holy temple, his holy temple. Like, hey, the, the, I'm sorry to cut you yeah, off because no, you just said it and it came to my mind. And his prayer, right? He says in verse eight, those who cling to the vain right. idols yeah. leave me behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, idols leave behind the gracious love. Even the way he spoke spiritually towards the immature spiritual people, which is what the people of Nineveh are. Mm-hmm. Like they don't know God. They've never had that. Yeah, they're wicked and all that stuff. But they didn't have the mm-hmm. privilege that Jonah, you and your people have. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the whole point was for you to go reach those people. Right. That was the whole point from the beginning. Right, right. Jonah totally missed that. Yes. And I think Jonah represent the nation. Yes. Where they totally yes. missed that. And God is like, yo, you're missing the point. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you to go do shouldn't be weird. It's not outside of my will that I've told your forefathers. You go go and read it. You know. You know what Abraham said. You know what I'm saying? So now that's that's like the process. This is God being God, who he is. And then this is um God exacting his will. Mm-hmm. And this is Jonah be like, no, that part you're wrong. We gotta do it my way. Mm-hmm. Let him die. Yeah. Let them be wiped out. Matter of fact, you should judgment on them. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of I compartmentalize Jonah's rebellion specific to this particular situation. I agree, and 150 percent, I agree. That, that when I was reading it, because like I said, when we get to chapter four, it shows that very clear. You right. know that was like, and it's crazy because he said those who regard worthless idols, idols, and that was an idol in his life. In his life, that right. was something yeah. that he couldn't let go. That made it to the point where he rebelled against God. You know, mm. he he purposely went the other way to the point where he didn't even want the presence of God. Mm. That's how deep it's going, and God is showing him that this thing that you have in your heart to the point where you're rebelling against me. I gotta throw a storm at you. You gotta get thrown off. The, you got all of this is happening to you because you won't let this one thing go, and this yeah. is why we're beefing right now. And that's what it was. Yo, it's, it's so wild that you mentioned that. I literally had a conversation with a guy today. Um, <laughs> Oh man! Make sure you do the accent too. <laughs> Yo, so my man was he had a uh, you know I love Jesus hat on, and I look I said oh man I love your hat I love I love Jesus also and then he came up to me and said you know you are chosen I said what yeah that was bad <laughs> <laughs> he said yo hey, man he said hey, boy. yo yo we, yo we, we, we the root sorry of, we to the, all the Jam- Jamaicans <laughs> out there baby. Said, root of bad. David wow. I said huh. I said, Ruth, David? <laughs> and I just, I, you know, I gave him the dumb look, huh? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. Then, you know, he went on, he's like, you know, Jesus was the seed of David and Solomon and, you know, us, we are part of the heritage. I was like, but. What do you mean, what do you mean by us? And I said, and I said, <laughs> black people. You know, and I said, Jesus, I said um, people, Jesus man. died for us all. 
um, all of us. And we are covered by his sacrifice when he went to the cross was for all man. He's like, ah. Oh. He's like, nah. Then he went like this. I am black but comely. I said, what? Song he said, I am. Yeah. I said, Song of Solomon, one verse five. I was like, that was in Solomon speaking. I was like, that was the woman wow. that was talking. He's like, you brainwash. <laughs> you, you idiot boy. Brainwash. <laughs> I said, I said, yo, it's not about black. I was like, how are you talking about you love Jesus and you pushing this black thing on me? Yep. It's about mm-hmm. Jesus. Right. It's not about your color mm. or your complexion. It's about, you know, and you and you started, you know, going on. I don't want to go through the whole, but the whole thing's like that idol yep. of his race, his nationality, his skin color supersedes. That's pretty much that is not the gospel. That is not Jesus. That is not God. Because his color is more important than God. Mm-hmm. His race is more important than God. His people you know, is more important than God, yep. you know, so he, so I'm like, yo, th- that, that is idolatry when you've created your own God and you're pro- professing to be a believer. Mm. So that's, that's, that's a big idol in 2023 going into 2024, especially in America. Right up. Right. And people, mm-hmm. you know, identify with whatever color, whatever, Nationality, po- politics, political politics, party, yep. <laughs> religion, yep, and y'all missing the whole point. Yep, like you missed what the Lord said from the beginning, and that was the problem. That that was the idol in his life. Right. That's why he. That's why he rebelled against God. Be it just selfish. <laughs> Use that. The the it's about me. Yep. Like Jonah was Jonah's idol, mm-hmm, his, right. his nationalistic pride and all that stuff. He was ready for 120,000 people to die mm. for that. And the Lord came and was like, yeah, you know those terrible people over there? They're reaching. And, and it's not like the Lord is not just. Like he's just. Right? If If he went... You know, obviously we'll get to it. Like the Lord is just. He's perfectly just. But he's also gracious. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, these yo, those people over there, they're about to reach past the the tipping point. Go in and send them a message for me. And he was like, No. no. Yep. What he told him to do was totally in line with who God is. Right. Universal love. Everybody has the opportunity to gain salvation. Right. Through yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Even the worst of the worst, which the Assyrians were. Yeah. The right. worst group of people, they were still it was still available to them. Mm. It reminds me of um who was that? Is Corby Tamboon mm-hmm. with the you know, seeing the Nazi that was saved and yeah. she didn't, you know, it, it it came to a point where, you know, after every all the atrocities, you know, the um the Nazis did to her people. She was faced with that to forgive him because he came to him and he came to her was like, listen, I'm saved. I'm born again. And that was the struggle for her. And that's how I kind of look like the Assyrians. Like, you know, they at that time, they were the Nazis. They were, you know, Mm -hmm. these people that, you know, did all these, the evil group that did all these atrocities and killed millions and millions of people. And it's worse if the atrocities against you and your people. Right. (laughs) (laughs) When you don't even have and nothing to do, home, right, right, right. <laughs> right, 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 and that's you what, it, and that's what it, that's what it is, and that's how, that's how you can kind of look at it now. It's like somebody who went through the Holocaust, seeing one of these Nazi Germans saved, or the Lord is telling you know somebody who is a Jew who went through the Holocaust who got saved, well, go man, preach nice. that, yeah. go preach that to all those. Make it, make it current. Yeah, right. Go to Gaza. Yep. Right. Yeah. Go to the the Hamas. What's right. his name? Hamas. 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 How you call him Hamas? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna call him Hamas. Hamas. <laughs> Hamas and chips. <laughs> Go to Hamas, the Hamas terrorist group. We know what they did in October seventh. Yeah. Right. Go preach. Right. Go preach the gospel to them. Or even African American. Right. Go to the white man. Right. Mm. All Should the stuff gospel. that he went through. You went through in slavery and. You know, that's something that you're holding on to. But if you're saved and you're born again, why are you not, you know, right. going out and preaching to the Caucasians? 
You yeah. know, sometimes so, it, that could be a that could be a, a barrier. I remember when I first got saved, I was on that pro black tip very hard, and that's something the Lord had to deal with me. Just even opening my heart to even loving other races. You understand what I'm saying? To, I know exactly what Jonah is going through because I believe everybody, <laughs> everybody goes through that. Because again, this is a world that we live in a world that Prejudices. is all about prejudice, racism, bigotry. It, it, that's how you was raised. A lot of the homes we were raised in, the parents, yeah. our parents, our grandparents, our uncles, the elders, they instilled and ingrained a lot of that in us. And when you get saved, you got to kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's like Puerto. It's like a Puerto Rican seeing a Dominican. You know what I'm saying? You know. You know what that makes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know how the Puerto Ricans talk about <laughs> the Dominican. I mean, you know, the Dominicans know their place. You see. <laughs> You know what I, mean? I know how the Puerto Ricans talk about the Dominicans. <laughs> so all the Puerto Rocks out there, show the Dominicans some love, man. They're your brothers too. <laughs> you know, you know what that makes me think of? Um, that perfect example of what we saw the love of God, which uh, we and we saw the backlash. Do you remember it was um his name was I just looked up real quick, Brant Jean, when he yeah. w- and when his brother got killed. Oh, he forgave Am- right. Amber Geiger. Right, that police officer. Police officer yeah. yeah, and he and he said, "Yo, I love you, you know, I whatever, and I just want to show you that you know God loves you." And then the judge gave her a Bible, and the thing is, is that you remember the backlash mm. that the audience, that right. all the uh, you know the people is like, how could he forgive the the police officer that killed his brother? See, I expect that. <laughs> You go on social media, you see everybody's brain short circuiting. Right. When mm-hmm. they read something like that, mm-hmm. like yeah, right. Because you're not, you're part of the world. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's how you're supposed to. Re- you're supposed yeah. to be racist. You are racist. Yeah. You all of those things because you're not yeah. saved. You're not regenerated. Yeah, that's right. My problem is the believer is when people that claim to be Christians right. or right. Are Christians, right, and they have a problem with it, right. And I'm like, I expect that from the Ninevites, right. From the Canaanites, from the Hamites, which is which is how y'all behaving, right? right. That, mm-hmm. Meaning that that spirit, that you know, non-believers, right. unsafe people movement. Mm-hmm. But you, so you tell me, you're born from above. Mm. You mean you got saved and you did nothing, unmerited favor, mm-hmm. and you're saying that you can't understand that, right? So did you experience it for real? Right, right. <laughs> It's a great point. <laughs> so why you can't understand it that the brother who's the brother whose brother got killed by this cop is able to forgive. So that's now right. fam, get in the book. No, that's that's, right. that's definite. And I think this book is put there for that. Because again, like that's what you know, I think that's what everybody who because we're all born in a nationality, and I don't care what nationality you in, there's another nationality. That you got a problem with, mm-hmm. it's always like that. Right. From w- when you're young in the household, you're hi- you're gonna hear it, and it don't matter. There's always gonna be these little things that you know, like I said, the parents, the people around you, they're gonna say. And if you're saved, like you said, you're saved and you're born from above. Like, why is that still? Why are you still looking at those people a certain way? Why do you still have a problem even interacting with them, or even going out there? Like, it's like again, you're in that spot of Jonah. And again, that was his that was his biggest problem. And that's an idol. Yes. That's an idol. That national pride that you have, like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you know, before I'm a Christian, I'm I'm Irish. You know, that's I got yeah. Irish blood and you go so hard with it, but understanding that, you know, like I said, throughout history, every nationality got a problem with another nationality. Do you is that wall totally tore down in your life? I and I, I heard uh Tony Evans, he he preached a sermon on that, and he broke it down where you know a lot of Christians they filter Christianity through their um, identity, whether it's black or whether it's you know whatever nationality you are, instead of it being the other way, right? Instead of filtering your culture, because yeah. listen, there's nothing wrong with. The different cultures. Yeah. No, no, no. The no, Lord no. designed it that way. There's right. different flavors, different people. You got different foods, whatever. But you should filter your culture because everybody's culture got trash in it. Trash behavior. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to filter that through the lens of Christianity. 
Like your identity should be uh, anchored in this new life that you received from heaven. That's, right. That's your identity. Your identity is not black or this or that. So it's, it's, it's like a lot of people have it backwards. Sometimes they say, yo, you go to a black church? I'll be like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> or they say, oh, oh black you know love. What that is. I'm like, what's black like love? <laughs> and how is it different? From love. From there's no other love. Love, right, right. Just from love, love. Love, love. love. Yeah, how's black love different? And these are things that people say, and it's almost, you know, people's brains get hacked on social media. People just say it, you know? Support black business. Why? <laughs> Am I going to get a discount? <laughs> I'm, I want to be fiscally responsible. <laughs> Listen, I want the best service. <laughs> So chill, I want to maximize. Chill, chill, I want to maximize. <laughs> see, you're a traitor to your people. That's the you see. I want to maximize. Now, that's, nah, babe, that's how you sound. My spending power. Nah, man. <laughs> Why you want me to do your favor? Just say that. Say that. Say do me. A, nah, call B. It, do me a favor. Nah, right. B. But it, no, no. What I and I'm joking. But yeah, 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 yeah. They're packaging it in this um, prejudice, this right. racist, you know, marketing and branding and. Almost guilting you if you do something wrong. I'm like your dog. All of that is off. Right. All of that is wrong. So, and that is what Jonah is so anchored in that it's become a problem. Mm. That he had to end up at the bottom of the sea. Mm. Like you know before he 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 called out to God and started remembering God and God being gracious still delivered him. Cause you got a job to do. I ain't, right. I ain't, I ain't tell you to clock out yet. You still got a job to do, right? <laughs> Have you guys ever experienced verse seven, when my soul fainted within me? I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. What you think about that, Ralph? Verse seven. <laughs> Verse seven. Has that ever happened? No, Have you ever experienced that? You see? Where your soul fainted, <laughs> something happened to you, and it brought you like to where you wanted to to be in the throne room. And the reason I bring that up is because okay. it happened to me. Remember, we were talking a little bit about my when my tongue turned black. Yeah, you. Didn't, you, you I never. You. I never told him the story. <laughs> you, yeah, you never. <laughs> but it was basically I. This was this is what brought me to the Lord, you know, eight nine years ago. I was in DR doing, you okay, know. Where was he at? I, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say. It. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> he wasn't in PR. He was in DR. I was in, I was in DR doing my dirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, oh, the the morning before we were supposed to leave, I'm in the bathroom brushing my teeth. I spit out, you know, the the water, and it was black. So I'm like. What's going on here? I spit it out. I look in the mirror. My tongue was black. Yo, at that moment, literally, my soul fainted within me. I, yo, <laughs> fainted with it. Yo, I felt empty, like like my soul, because I was like, I got the black plague. It's judgment. Yo, you thought I'm the judgment smashing. was here. I got the plague. This is it. I'm done. The Lord had been working with me weeks before, working on in it. my life mm -hmm. weeks before that, where I was to the point where, damn, I shouldn't even go to DR. But I was like, it's already paid. You know what? I'm going to go anywhere. I ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> it was already paid, just like the <laughs> Jonah paid. <laughs> paid for the shit. <laughs> yo, yo, so I look in the mirror, I seen that, and it wasn't coming off. Yo, so I was like, yo, I was weak. <laughs> I went to the bed in the room. I was like, Lord. <laughs> Yo, yo, this is the big one. Yo, I, the yo, big one. Yeah, like with the Fred I have been cast out of your sight. Yeah. <laughs> yo, so check it out. You meet, yo, the Holy yeah, Spirit hit right. me there. He was like, "Sit down, relax, and Google what things can make your tongue black." So I'm like, because I was like, "Where's the ER? I'm in DR. Like, it's, they're not gonna fix me here." So anyway, I look it up, and one of the first things that popped up was um, Pepto Bismol tablets i i was i was drinking a lot of uh virgin pina coladas and it was giving me the runs okay so i was taking pepto bismol tablets uh, so the bismuth in it right yo so when i read that and i was i put two and two together i was like lord 
That's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, but I went from I was about to die. You remember the Lord. I remember the Lord. Like literally, I'm not lying. Right, like, right, right. Inside right. of me, my soul fainted. Like I was like, I'm mm. done. I got some mm. black plague from from doing what I'm not supposed to be doing. Yo, the next day, we flew in. So I went into my bedroom and it was a wrap. Right. Spent hours on my knees crying out to the Lord, praying, and and the Lord like embraced me. In a way that I'll never ever forget, and that was the beginning of me walking for the Lord like on fire. But um, and that's what I think. I think yeah. like chapter one, we see a confession, mm, and then chapter real. two, I think we're seeing, you know, a repentance. But again, you know, as we go on, I think it's a, a progressional. So I think nobody it's else has that happen in them. You're so fainted. I mean, I think that's what happens when you. You know what I mean? Like before you yeah, my get kid saved, being black. before you get saved, there were moments where you like, you get them shocks. It wasn't that yeah, the Lord, the Lord, like yours happened like boom, boom, boom. But I know there was moments, you know, even with me, like, you know, before I got, there was moments where you just, you get them scares. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I, had, I think I told you guys about that. And you that, remember like, God. One of my scares, like, you know, messing with. A shorty, yeah, yeah, and they, they, they and, he almost and, got stabbed in the crib. Yeah, yeah, and then like she didn't tell me that she had a man, and the man walked in, and uh, started, you know, fighting the shorty. You know what I'm saying? And like he snuffed it. Then I went like, I was like, yo, Duke. You know, I was like, cause I was about to bim me anyway. I was about to bounce. You know what I'm saying? And um, but when he snuffed it, I was like, oh man, if shorty ends up dying, <laughs> it's gonna be on my conscience. You know what I'm saying? So I went, and I stopped, <laughs> went to stop the fight, and then my man ran to the kitchen and grabbed the meat cleaver. Ooh. Psst. It wasn't even a knife. It was a Oof. and he charged me and swung. Wow. It wasn't like yo, like a uh, scaring. He charged me and swung. And I, yo, B, it was God's grace. I ducked that bad boy. <laughs> and, and I ran out. Luckily, the thing is that the door was slightly open. Because okay. when he came in, he was furious. Because mm -hmm. a dude was up in his crib. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So it left the door partly. So he yeah, had left the door partly. So I just jetted. After that one, I was like, yo, man, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> now I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the beginning. Right. Of like, because my soul fainted. Because the thing is, I was. <laughs> my soul. Because you don't. That's going to be the, the name of this episode. My soul <laughs> fainted. My soul <laughs> fainted. <laughs> and you know, the, the wild thing, the thing that was running through my mind, because like, because I was during, like, when I was, you know, um, you know, during residency, you, you go talk to patients and ask them, like, yo, yo, why'd you get shot? How'd you get shot? Why you get stabbed? How you got stabbed? And they was like, oh, I was minding my own business, just standing at the bus stop. They all lie. Yeah, Every yeah. last one. I was standing and minding my own business. And all I could think of, yo, they're going to be, I'm going to be in the ER. <laughs> and yeah. they're going to ask me, yo, how you got this meat cleaver on your neck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, I was standing at the bus stop. my own business. <laughs> but that's all you feel for number seven? What? So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all you feel about number seven? Oh, nah, nah. Yeah. So you won't go into it? You no, no, I, no, I forget it. We'll go into it later. Ne ne <laughs> ne ne next. Yeah, Yo, because yeah. are we? Yeah, yeah. We'll come back later. We, 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 yeah, we're about to wrap it up. We're about to so, wrap up. So, um, you know, uh, and what I'm hearing is how patient God is with us, how loving, uh, gracious, gentle, even when we put ourselves in the worst type of situations. He's the same. He doesn't change. God is love, and if we experienced it, you know, for those that that have or confess that they have, you know, we have to live our lives uh, working that out, right? Loving others and glorifying God through that. So, um, you know, God showed his love through Jesus Christ when he sent his son to die on the cross, and the reason that he did that is to save us from eternal separation, from eternal damnation. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will spend eternity in hell. Mm. And mm. as long as you have breath in your lungs, all you have to do is believe. You know, believe in Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. So um, that's our prayer. Um, thank you, everybody, and good night. Amen. Amen. Later.